Hi, I'm Pete Schellenbach, culinary specialist with Vulcan. And I'm here in the test kitchen today, and I'm gonna be cooking on the Vulcan K6 ETT electric tilting kettle. So like all of our Vulcan kettles, the K6 has embossed markings on the back to show you the volume of the kettle. Something to take note of is that the top marking, in this case a six gallon, the six gallon line is below the lip of the kettle. What that means is that there is a true working volume of six gallons as opposed to our competition that may have their six gallon at the edge of the kettle. That means that as soon as something comes to a boil in their kettles, it begins to boil over, which means that they don't have a true working volume as stated. The other thing to remember is that our rim is reinforced. Now, if you think about what everyone does when they're stirring things in a kettle, they stir and then knock the spoon on the side of the kettle. By reinforcing the rim, it prevents that rim from denting when people knock their spoons or utensils against the side of it. So this is a two-thirds jacketed kettle, which means that there's an inner wall and an outer wall. And that outer wall, two-thirds of that, contains the heat source. The benefit here is that you get an even, gentle heat signature, not just on the bottom, as you would on a stock pot on a stove, but you also get heat moving into the product from the sides. That increases the heat transfer and decreases the amount of time it takes to cook your food. We do make a full jacketed kettle, but those are stationary kettles. Um, a stationary kettle is best for products that it is a single item that is going to take a day or so to cook um, because you're cooking in such huge volumes. Removal of that product is gonna be more of a manual process as opposed to a tilting kettle where when I've finished cooking, I can just tilt the kettle forward and empty it that way. Our kettles are constructed with a 316 gauge stainless steel liner, which uh, is great if you're doing high acid products like tomato products, tomato sauces, things like that. You know that that stainless steel is gonna last. Our competition will only make a kettle with 316 gauge steel for a 60 gallon kettle and greater, and then for an upcharge, whereas our 316 gauge steel is in our entire line of kettles and standard. So one other thing with our kettle is that it has an ellipsoidal or a curved bottom to the interior wall of the kettle. And that makes it easier to stir, to remove product. And when you're cleaning or removing the product, it's easier to scoop against that curved surface and nothing hides in a, uh, in a right angle corner. For both rapid and even heating, our kettles have three heating elements built into them. The nice thing about the way that our kettles are made is that if an individual element goes down, that individual element can be replaced, not the entire heating system. So if one goes down, you still have two to work with until that third one gets replaced. And when that third one gets replaced, you don't have to replace all three. So let me talk a little bit about the control panel of the K6. Starting at the top, we've got the tilt lock. What that is, is that in order to tilt the kettle, I have to pull the tilt lock out and then tilt the kettle. It is absolutely a safety feature. It also will lock when the kettle is completely tilted. That means that you don't have to keep putting pressure on the handle while you're cleaning it out. You can tilt it all the way, it will lock there and stay, you can clean it out, then you release it and put the kettle back into its original position. Moving down the uh, control panel from there is the temperature control dial, which moves from warm to simmer to boil. Then below that, we've got a low water warning light. What that is for is to protect the heating elements. Because the heating elements are inside the kettle with water in there, because it's a steam jacketed kettle. It's the elements in the water that make the steam that is used to heat the kettle. If the kettle were to not have enough water in it, it would damage the heating elements because they would be on but not giving their energy into anything. So if the kettle is to, if the kettle were to, for some reason, not have enough water in it, that the heating elements could be damaged by turning it on, you'll get a low water warning light. And then below that, a simple power switch to use there. 
So now I'm gonna go ahead and get started cooking these mashed potatoes. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill my kettle with water. I'm gonna use my faucet that is attached here. I'm gonna turn on the faucet and fill my kettle. Then I'm gonna turn on the power switch, bring it up to temperature and cook those mashed potatoes. One of the biggest benefits of using a jacketed steam kettle for cooking things like stocks and sauces is that, that that steam jacketing the kettle transfers energy very evenly and smoothly into the product. Also, there's much less chance of scorching a product because, uh, because the a stock pot would be sitting like on a burner, whereas here it's surrounded by steam instead of a, a point source like a, uh, like a flame underneath. For products like, uh, like mashed potatoes, a steam kettle is great because I don't have to carry the kettle from the kitchen where I filled it with water over to the stove. And more importantly, once the food has been cooked, either the stock, the sauce, or in this case, the potatoes, I then have to lift that heavy stock pot back off the stove, take it to the sink, strain it, and, uh, and then come back with it. That, um, is just inherently less safe than being able to do all of those operations here in one spot. Another benefit of steam kettle uh, versus a stock pot on a stove is that 50% of the energy that you use to heat a stock pot on a stove goes around the stock pot and then up through your ventilation system. It's just a less efficient way of getting energy into the food versus a jacketed steam kettle where I've got all of that energy contained within the kettle. There's no hot spots around the kettle and I can be sure that all of that energy is going directly into the food. So it is a more efficient way of cooking. Another way that the kettle is an extremely efficient piece of equipment for your operation is that, like I mentioned, you don't have to babysit something in it. Once you get a soup or a stock started and set it to simmer, you don't have to have someone standing there working it all the time. That means that for that particular product, I have very few labor dollars attached to it versus like something that where I've got a cook that has to stand there and stir or manipulate a product or flip things over. Those have higher labor signatures if you want to look at it that way. A jacketed steam kettle is much more of a set and forget. Um, I can set it and then go on to other tasks. So that lets me as an operator utilize my labor a little more efficiently. So when it comes to accessories on a steam kettle, uh, we've got a few options. Um, there are different faucet styles. I can have a swing arm faucet that moves right over the kettle. I can have a spray hose or I can have both like this one does. Another accessory that I think is super important is the strainer. If I put the strainer and attach it to the front of the kettle, then when I tilt it, I catch any of the, any of the product that I would like to keep in the kettle. Or conversely, if I'm making something like a stock, I can draw off the liquid and keep the, uh, keep the onions and bones and things like that in the kettle so I don't have to worry about transporting those. Then it's a very simple process to just clean that out. As far as cleaning goes, cleaning a kettle is very, very easy it's unlikely that I've scorched anything. So generally the surface on the inside, once the product has been removed, it's a pretty simple thing to clean that stainless back down. I rinse it with water, make sure that all of the, all of the sediment or any of the remaining material that I've cooked is out of the kettle. Then uh, a mild soap solution and a soft brush, uh, also available as an accessory, a soft brush to, uh, to clean that out and then just another rinse with uh, clear water and I'm all finished uh, because I can just tilt the kettle to, to dump that out. All of the cleaning, all of the, all of the water that is associated with cleaning it is all self-contained right here in this one station. If you have any more questions about cleaning, you can refer to any of our operational videos uh, that speak to um, specific instances on cleaning. The typical customer of a steam kettle is someone who needs um, large volumes of soups, stocks, and sauces that they can basically set and forget. Because of that gentle heat transfer, 
once I set my dial at simmer, I know that I'm not gonna boil over. I know that I'm not gonna get scorching or, uh, or hot spots in the kettle, and my product is gonna come out great every time. My potatoes are finished simmering, so it's now time to remove the water that I've cooked them in. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn my kettle off, and now I'm gonna attach my strainer accessory. I'm gonna put this here on the front of the kettle, and I'm gonna secure it with these bolts, these set screws, one on each side. That way I know that when I drain off the water, my strainer won't slip. Remember what I said before about the tilt lock? I'm gonna have to pull this out and then tilt the kettle forward. And uh, now I'm gonna drain off the water. As I said, when I get to the bottom of this travel, the lock will kick back in to hold the kettle in this tilted position. So to put it back up, release the lock again. Now I can remove my strainer. So now that the water's drained off my potatoes, uh, I'm gonna be ready to uh, add the butter and the cream and the salt, uh, season them up, mash them right here, and I can do that right here in my kettle. And then I'll be able to scoop them out and get ready for plating. Today we made some mashed potatoes and I'm serving them as uh, sort of a loaded mashed potato. So I finished the mashed potatoes with butter and cream and I topped it with some bacon that I cooked off in our TCM combi and a little bit of shredded cheddar cheese. Thanks for joining us while we cooked in our Vulcan K6 ETT tilting kettle. Our Vulcan kettles range in size from the little six gallon that we uh, cooked in today, um, all the way up to 150 gallons. And all of them come with the Vulcan free equipment checkout. A technician will come out, check the installation to make sure that there were no problems with the installation, that you're up and ready to go. And the nice thing is that the warranty resets to that as the starting date. Thanks again for joining us in the Test Kitchen for this session of a la carte, and I'll see you soon. Vulcan K6ETT uh, tilting. I, I was, I'm so amazed that I remembered K6ETT that, that I just forgot everything else about my entire being. <laughs> Thanks again for, it was a, no, no, not again. I'm thanking you for the first time right now. Thanks for joining us while we cooked with our Vulcan KE7. Nope, that's not it. Thanks for, this is it. Do you feel it? Feel it coming. <laughs>